<clears throat> All right, what's going on, everybody? My name is Swole, and this is take two, two of this video of making a recording session template from scratch in Pro Tools. Now, the first one was very blurry. I appreciate the person who hit me up in the comments was like, damn, bro, this blurry as hell. All right, so we're doing it again. My goal is to do this in less than an hour, well, an hour or less, and hopefully be as descriptive and informative as possible with not many edits. So here we go. If you liking the vibe, motherfucking like and subscribe. Damn, that shit rhymed, and I'm going to say that in every video now. All right, here we go. Let me switch my screen around. Uh... All right, all right, all right. So this is what I got set up right now. See what's going on. Oh, shit. Why is that there? Don't worry about that. You didn't see that. This is what I got going on right now. So I just have a cue mix, which is what y'all are hearing me out of and what the artists will be hearing me out of also. I'm going to describe this in the future, though. The talk back, like in this video, the talk back is what I'm talking to you guys on. The only thing I have on my talkback is just a little bit of compression and this Mutomatic plugin, which is free. If I press play, it mutes the volume so I don't have to turn my talkback button on and off. Um, it's a free plugin, also. I forgot who makes it. Oh, Sound Radix. There we go. Mutomatic, Sound Radix. Go get that if you need it. And then on here, this, uh, this is how I'm talking to y'all uh, through my DAW. Uh, this is a restream plugin. This plugin restream is free also. I think Blue Cat's patchwork was free also. Yeah, so I got that. That lets you patch in like VSTs to FL Studio because you have to have like AAX type plugins to um to use plugins in FL Studio. But here's my master fader too. That's all we got right now. So let's go. First thing first on this session, I'm gonna create some buses. This is where everything is gonna be routed to. So here we go. To do that, I hit Control Shift N. I'm using a PC, by the way. So if you have a Mac, I mean, I'm sure y'all know the equivalents. I ain't nothing but a Google search away. Um, so yeah, we're making a stereo aux. And this one's gonna be uh, pre master. The next one, we're gonna do another stereo aux. This one's gonna be instrumental another one another one stereo aux this one's gonna be got them vocals another one and this one is gonna be lee vocals and then stereo aux track this one's gonna be b vocals oh damn i didn't even mean to press enter <laughs> damn it <laughs> I pressed enter by mistake. Fucking up already. Alright, I'm gonna just add these other ones real quick. Um, just one more for real. Um, aux. And this is gonna be vocal effects. <clears throat> Alright, so these are gonna be my buses that I'm routing everything to in the session. This is a basic session this is going to be for recording um, over a two track beat um, recording one artist or one instrument but the concept can be applied to recording multiple artists on multiple instruments um, at a time so this is what I'm sending everything to I'm gonna solo save these so let's save all these oxes I'm gonna color code because you know your colors ain't right you know what I'm saying you gotta get the vibe feeling right Mm, I don't want that to be like blue. I like that. And the purple for the vocals. I know I like these to be like that. So this can be like that. And then vocal effects. Game time. So I'm not going to mess with these inputs and outputs right now. Not yet. Excuse me, I had a burp. And then we're going to make some more. Some more. So now we're going to have a stereo. Uh, audio track for the beat like do this in all caps then we'll have a mono audio track for the record track it's all that REC and then we're gonna make some um, we're gonna make some tracks for the lead vocals the ad-libs the background vocals um, and their respective buses so these are gonna also be mono audio tracks 
so the lead vocals we're gonna say like for the leads let's do two let's go hook leads and then we'll go to um first lead and then we're gonna make a bus for these leads so we're gonna make a stereo is it stereo or stereo i don't know and then we're gonna go leads for all the leads and then we're gonna make some for the ad libs let's do uh let's do three for the hook three mono audio tracks so we're gonna go uh hook ads and then we're gonna do three mono audio tracks for the verse ads and then we're gonna make one stereo aux track ad, ooh, ooh, ad libs now we're gonna hit these background vocals so let's do say four four mono audio tracks and we're gonna do hook bgs four mono verse bg oh god bgs and then we're gonna make a aux for all of those background vocals stereo aux we go call those bg vocals and enter all right all right all right all right now since all of these are selected if i hold down shift alt and i click up here and i hit no input that will be applied to all of the things that are selected god damn that shit didn't work okay shift alt there we go it worked that time um so yeah if i if i want to select everything if i hold down shift you know i select all of these things like like you're selecting files in a folder if i have these selected and i hold down control shift it deselects what I, what's already selected or it selects what is unselected you feel me then if i just hold down shift it's just selecting what's what's in the row what's next to it but now we're going to do some color coding on these things so i like the beat to be red i like this record track to be pink I like that I like for the lead vocals to be that purple I like the ad libs to be something like that's feeling good right there I like for the backgrounds to be something like that and I like for these to be Uh, what the hell we're gonna go with that color I like that and then I don't like that I ain't gonna lie to you between these I think I like this <laughs> all right and now I'm gonna make some effects so we got all of these things made this is you know oh let me solo safe don't forget that solo safe your oxes solo safe them oxes and the reason you do that is so if you um solo stuff the appropriate things that need to play still get played you feel me like if i solo this but this was not solo safe and i have this routed i have all my leads routed to this aux but i solo this my lead would be muted i wouldn't be able to hear my lead it'd be muted because this is technically muted so if i solo safe that i'm listening to this this by itself and this is not muted you feel me you feel me that's why you uh solo safe those things and now we're gonna make some effects so we're gonna make some stereo audio tracks we're gonna make a doubler and we're gonna make uh, some delays let's do like three delays i like to just call my delays oh we're gonna make this an aux too um, i like to just call my delays delays um i just changed the like what kind of delay it is on the actual delay plugin i don't really like using a whole lot of sins um but you know y'all y'all see so we're gonna have three delays three reverbs just something real basic real quick you feel me nothing too crazy 
but it's gonna get the job done quite well and quite quickly all right so we got all the effects over here i'm just drag these over here because i know my face is kind of in the way <clears throat> and we're gonna set these up kind of how i have them so we're gonna put these over here because these uh I guess over this delay and this reverb is really gonna be for the ad libs and oh gosh and the background vocals. Um, so now, oh let me color code. Come on now, come on now. Let me get these colors right now. Mm, I like that color. All right. So now we're gonna get to the routing, the fun stuff. Um, so we're gonna start at the top. You feel me? So this is a pre-master, so that's gonna be routed to the master. All good. But the input though, that input though, that input is the pre-master. So basically the name of these is what my inputs are. So the input for this one, instrumental. The input for the vocals is the vocals. But how you would do this so if you don't have a template already like i already have my template set up so all of these buses are saved but if they if this just says bus one and then two you know what i'm saying you just click on the bus then you rename it and this would be vocals you feel me and then you'd hit okay or press enter and like now that would be the name of that bus but i have all these already here because you know this is like my template but um yeah it's the same thing you would just select it right click it rename it and keep going down the line doing that you feel me that's what i did the first time i i, I made this and many other times countless times all right so all these inputs right they, they they these these are auxes these are buses so you know all of these inputs are on this bus list and you just keep going down i like to keep my stuff in a in an order and there you go so there's no input for the beat because this is just the audio track that um we're gonna have the beat on when that time comes we're not gonna do the, do the outputs just yet the input for the record track though even though it is an audio track the input for this is going to be on your interface so this is going to be whatever your whatever your mic is plugged into on your interface that's where your input is going to be on here you feel me and for mine it's input three that i have renamed record and obviously input six is where my talk back is and that's what i'm talking to you guys on but input three that's where my microphone is that's where it's live and that's where the microphone is hiding and then we're gonna do the input for the leads. Mm -mm, there we go, leads. We're gonna do the input for the ad libs. Also, um, if you hold down shift, and hit the scroll wheel, you can scroll left and right, you feel me? If you're in this window, you can do the same thing, scroll left and right. Blah, blah. And then here we go on background vocals and we in there so now we finna turn up on these outputs right so again at the top the mass the pre-master is going to the master so that's okay that's how we want it but we want the instrumental to be going to the pre-master so here we go instrumental going from you know this this bus to the pre-master and then we want the vocals to be going to the pre-master also. We want the vocals outputting to the pre-master. So see how it's vocals outputting to the pre-master. And this is the input of the pre-master where the vocals are going to. And then this is outputting to the master, which is the master right here. And that's coming out the speakers. And now we got, what else, lead vocals. We're gonna send these lead vocals to the vocals, to all vocals. And then we're gonna send, uh, we're gonna send B vocals and vocal effects to the all vocals. You know, all of these are just going to the all vocals. So I can select both, both of these, I can shift alt, and then I can go 
all vocals in the game. And then for the beat, you guessed it, we want the beat to go to the instrumental. To the instrumental bus. Yeah. And then for the recording track, the pre-master. We want the recording track to go to the pre-master. And then these leads. We want the leads to go to, you guessed it, the lead vocal bus. And then these effects. We want these effects, all of these, to go to the vocal effects bus. And then we want um, the ad libs and the background vocals to go to the B vocals. And then, can't forget about this. We want all the background vocals to be going to this background vocal bus. Background vocals. And then we want all the ad libs to be going to the ad lib bus. Whatever my computer that thing. Ad libs. And then let's scroll on up back to these leads. Lead vocals. Here we go. Lead vocals going to the leads bus. So now we got the lead vocals going to this lead vocal bus. All of these vocals, you know, the hook and the verse going to this lead vocal aux. So I can process all of these vocals together instead of having to put all my plugins on each of these. And now I got four sets of the same plugins I could just put all of those plugins right here and then these leads all of these leads going here then those are going to this lead vocal bus which goes to this vocal bus which then goes to the pre master which then goes to the master bus and then these ad libs go to this ad lib bus these background vocals go to this background bus and then both of the, the ad libs and the backgrounds, they go to the B vocals, and then all of the vocals. The beat goes to the instrumental bus, and then to the pre master. You feel me? It's great like that. Nothing, you know, nothing too complicated. And you can see, like, it kind of, um, there's no input because it's going to be audio tracks on these ad lib tracks. So the output, just to break this busing down, is. I don't know it's, it's I don't know I'm trying to break it down so it makes sense because I remember when I was first learning this and it kind of took a minute so definitely if this isn't making sense you might have to rewatch it a few times and just play around in Pro Tools with it and just route stuff different places and see why if you route something this way you get feedback or just experiment and try it and, and it'll start making sense the more you do it but the output of these ad libs is being input into this ad lib aux and the output of the ad libs is going to the b vocals so as that inputs into the b vocals the output of that is going to the vocals as that inputs into the all the vocals the output of, of all the vocals is going to the pre master as it inputs into the pre master the output of that is going to the master and that's where we hear everything out of so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. there we go there we go and so now we got the effects we got everything routed we we looking we looking pretty pretty good now the next thing i'm gonna do is the cue mix so i'm gonna explain the talk back and the cue mix real briefly real quick i have the input up so that i can always be monitored if i didn't have this up in order for me to be heard this would have to be recording and i would have to be pressing play if i turn this off y'all wouldn't be able to hear me for example right y'all couldn't hear me so i had to turn that back on so the input is on so you can monitor so on the record track you want that same concept going on all the time you want to be able to hear the artist even when you're not recording so if you have the input engaged on this record track 
you'll always be able to hear the input I'm just gonna flip it to this other screen just so y'all can see how it looks I also like the beat to be you know this space for the where the beat is to be a little larger because it just kind of helps me visually when I'm when I'm working and recording um, so yeah you want to have this engaged and also to make this larger if you hit windows and just up and down you can make this these things big larger and smaller you know really really quickly I suppose <clears throat> so yeah and if you select this track and you hit shift I it'll turn the input on and off you can arm record with shift R turn the input on shift I you know shift R turns the record arming on and off and the input monitoring on and off if it's shift I so yeah you know what I'm saying this, this is how I have it set up so you want to have the input on just already have the recording engaged so you can be ready at all times also you want to have it on punch mode you can right click on his and turn it to punch mode that's so you can if you're recording if you press play and the artist just starts singing and or rapping out of nowhere you don't have to stop it and be like damn I wasn't recording and then go back you could just hit control space bar and start recording as it's playing or you can hit three or you can hit F12 those are the three ways that I know of that you can record off of just hitting the keyboard so quick punch mode always when you're recording in my opinion I like loop mode because I like to loop stuff sometimes <clears throat> um, so yeah let's continue let's continue this Q mix alright so back to here we talked about the input and um, this Q mix right here this is just an aux so this Q mix is it's an output from my interface I have multiple um, outputs and inputs on my interface so this is output three and four off of my interface and it's going to the booth so the artist can hear a separate mix than I'm hearing in the control room so in the control room I'm hearing how everything how I need to hear it to make sure that everything sounds good but sometimes artists they don't want to hear their vocals at all or they want to hear them lower or louder well I definitely want to hear the vocals so I I can um, let me just move these over so for example let me I'm gonna put this on the instrumental so the artist can hear the instrumental because if I have this this is a sin so if I have this on um, if I don't have this on anything the artist isn't gonna be here be able to hear anything except for what this send is on so they can hear me talking right now and now that I put it on here they'll be able to hear the beat since it's on the instrumental bus and then I'm gonna put it on the all vocals bus so they can hear all their vocals with the effects also because the effects is routed to the all vocal bus and then I'm gonna put this on the record track so they can hear themselves talking <coughs> But so this Q mix is also on premaster. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Gotta make, make that centered right there. Can't forget about that. Let me check these real quick. Okay, we good. So I have this on pre-master. So they I mean pre-fader, excuse me. So if they want to hear their vocals lower, I can just turn them down a little bit. Oh, that was kind of a lot, but turn them down. And they'll be like, all right, bet that's perfect. They'll let you know like when it's good. Or you could just be like, let me know when it's good. You know what I'm saying? you'll turn it down and they'll be singing and be like all right that's perfect and you'll stop and you'll keep going but i still hear them at the same volume if i want them to be at a different level usually i would do it on the preamp you know what i'm saying on the preamp and the compressor to change their level um and then i would adjust for it on here for them you know i have the levels where i want everything hitting on my preamp and my compressor and i adjust for them right here <clears throat> and I have everything balanced in the way I want it to be in here but if they want their volume lower I can turn them down I can turn them up if they don't want to hear themselves at all I can mute them and they don't hear themselves at all um, if they want to be panned to the left I can pan to the left or the right or whatever um, but I keep this on pre-fader so you know this ain't affected by anything that I do this is totally just for them you know their own personal mix if they want to hear the beat louder I can just click on this and I can turn the beat up or I can turn the beat down you know what I'm saying they want to whatever they want you know what I'm saying I can adjust this as possible if I need to um, if I need to 
mute this and move this over to the lead vocals and the ad libs because they're like i just want my ad libs to be lower i don't i want my i like where my uh vo my vocals my lead vocal is sitting right now but i want to do some more backgrounds and i want the backgrounds that i've already done to be a little bit lower i'll just mute this and i'll copy this over here like that and then i'll um copy another one over here i might just leave these up now you know what i'm saying and i'll uh go here and i just lower the backgrounds because i may still want them to be at the the volume that that they're at right now i just lower you know that a little bit you feel me but that kind of messes things up because they won't be able to hit these effects so i'd have to fucking do that too you feel me but yeah you feel me you get the drift right you get the drift um so this q mix hopefully that's not muddying the whole explanation up but the q mix is a send and it's sending everything that I put this send on and you see the sends right here everything that I put this send on it will be sent to this channel and you see the output of this channel it's not the master it's the Q out one which is stereo output stereo output uh, three and three and four on my interface which is going into my recording booth so uh, I'm gonna just do this for now so yeah, that's how you set that up for the Q-Mix. And you can make their individual mixes however they like them. Next, we get into the fun stuff. We go in, plug in crazy. So we're going to start with the record track. I use the Slate Digital mic. Um, what is it? ML1. VMS or whatever. Um, it's kind of, it's pretty, it's pretty straight. You feel me? I fucks with it for sure. I, mean, I rock with it. I don't know if I'm not, I'm, I like it. You feel me? <laughs> I like it. Obviously, you know, models different different mics and stuff. I uh, I have it just defaulting to the C800, but well, the C800 model. Um, but I use a few of these kind of often. I, I switch it up per artist by what I think they might like. You feel me? But yeah, you know, and and also one thing I have presets right here for stuff that I I use often. That's a, another way to kind of just be fast. Uh, I'll show you some of them as we do this because as I put plugins on, you'll see me just clicking presets. Um, but next, I put on auto tune. Some just popped in my head um, that I need to show y'all. God damn, what's going on? Pitch shift. I'm tripping. I got distracted. Uh, you want to put a low latency on. I usually always just have it to low mail, but I do check and see if any of these sound better because sometimes they do. And I just default this to C major. I usually mess with the throat length a little bit. You know, you got to hit that format button. Yeah, this is the old version of auto tune. One day I might get the new one. Um, but I like to adjust the throat length to like 101 or 99 sometimes. Um, sometimes it sounds cool. And then when the artist sings into the auto tune, that's when I adjust the retune speed. I honestly just. I let it just be on what it defaults to, you know what I'm saying? And then I adjust it when they sing into it. But I have it bypassed because every artist isn't trying to, you know, use auto tune. But if they are, blah. And then if I, uh, if they are on auto tune, I obviously just copy these over onto the tracks. A lot of times, honestly, I just select this and I go Shift Alt and I just um, select auto tune and it'll put auto tune on all of these. You feel me? And then I'll just change, I'll just change stuff, you feel me? Like I just really just put it on the key and I'll make the leads the same, but the ad libs and the other stuff will probably be a little different, you feel me? But uh, yeah, you know, we're just gonna do that for now. Now the beat, on the beat, I use this Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack and um, I have this preset called Beat Enhancer. All I do, um, a lot of times when you get beats, say I'm getting a beat off YouTube. It, um, first off, let me make sure my, okay, cool. Say I'm getting a beat off YouTube, and um, when you when you download a beat, a lot of the top end, a lot of the, the clarity, the little sparkle up top is gone, you know what I'm saying? Because you're getting an MP3 and it may not even be mixed that well because it's a beat off YouTube, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's gonna be limited. So I like to boost 
a lot on the top end kind of in this frequency area you know boost something like that whatever sounds right and i mess with these to see you know what sounds good and then i mess i boost this, this is kind of like some top end boost too i mess with the presence and the sleigh and i just listen to see which one is best to me so i boost a little bit up there a lot of times when i boost this i'll dial this back just a tad you know and then i'll boost the low end if need be a lot of times these beats have a lot of low end so a lot of times i don't really need to use this but if i do you know it's, it's there you feel me so let me you know what i'm saying bring that back to its default settings and then i use the eq motherfucking the fab filter pro q3 and you know i'll eq the beat as needed you know i might have to boost a little bit here i might have to cut some you know i might have to do whatever I might boost a little bit of lows too you never you know whatever you need to do you feel me you do that you do that and so that's all i have on the beat and for my recording template and that's all i have on the recording track for my recording template now we're gonna get into these somewhat vocal chains i ain't even gonna call this a real vocal chain because you know this is just for recording just to get something like real quick but it's gonna sound pretty solid though um I, I use a deesser first if you don't have if you only have like pro tools plugins i'm gonna try to give you all some um damn i didn't solo save these come on come on tighten up some uh pro tools alternates obviously you can use the eq from pro tools right here to substitute for the um the pro q3 this eq3 7 band um, for this ain't really no substitutions that I know of in Pro Tools except for maybe parallel compression but that's for another day and this is just for recording so I would just EQ the beat honestly for a recording session like you don't need to do all of that when you get to mixing that's when you get to all that stuff so now we're gonna go here for a de -esser. so Pro Tools has a de -esser. this right here Dyn3 de -esser. it's an okay de -esser. But I like using this one from Waves. You know, I try which one sounds best on this option. On band pass and high pass, and I get my frequency right, and I and I'm in there. You feel me? A little DS in action going on, and then I actually do use this um, this EQ often. I try different. When I'm mixing, I, I try different EQs, but I, I do like this EQ a lot, and I use it most of the time, honestly. But I just high pass a little bit with this, with this EQ. That's all I use it for, is just to high pass the vocal a little bit. Um, and I just have it set up like that. I just hit that in, so when I, when I click on it, I'm just bet, and then I click on the next plugin, and I'm, I'm out. So actually, let me just bring these back to their defaults. The next thing is some compression. Now, if you don't have any other plugins, you can use this Dyn3 compressor. I use that compressor for a long time. You can make that thing jiggle. But I'm onto the R compressor from when I'm recording. I have this clean preset, obviously, to just take everything off and zero everything out for how I like it. And then I hit these. I, I try whichever setting sounds the best and I you know, combine them and I just play around with it until it sounds good and then I dial in my little ratio and threshold and compression on the vocal bling blah you feel me whatever sounds right bling bling so on and so forth and then the next thing I do is some EQ now obviously you can run it up with this EQ 37 did that for a mighty long time and now I'm onto this fat filter pro Q3 you feel me so you know what i'm saying you got your vocal record it you didn't drag it down into this into you know one of these audio tracks or all of these audio tracks or whatever you feel me now you you know you eq a little bit so you might do a little come on guys might do a little dip somewhere in here you feel me bling blah goodness gracious what's happening tighten up and then you might boost right here god damn i'm tripping today come on they might Turn up right there, I might come in with a shelf. You know, whatever. You feel me? Just you listen though. You feel me? Just listen and be like, what do I need to do? What do I not need to do? What do I want to take away? What do I want to leave? You know? There you go. 
the next thing I do is I add some saturation to the vocal I use lo-fi a lot which is Pro Tools uh, standard you know I'll change the bit rate I'll mess with the saturation and distortion all of that you know um, but also if you you know what I'm saying other people got other stuff I use I use Devil Lock, Decapitator, I use the Saturation Knob, um, Fresh Air, a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try this, now that I see this, I'm going to try this Saturator one day, but um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I try stuff, I try, you know, adding some kind of saturation, some type of vibe, sometimes I use... I forgot that I use this kind of kind of a decent amount. Oh, I might try this Kramer tape too, but um, the virtual tape machines I use that sometimes. But right now we just gonna go with the lo-fi for recording, and then after that I put another EQ. Usually I put uh some EQ that may add some like color. Like I'll try. Honestly, usually I would have um this is virtual mix rack on here. I'm gonna show you what I would usually use. But, um, and then I have this preset double EQs with trim and I just, you know, boost here, make some cuts, make some boost on this EQ and that'll be it. And sometimes I'll interchange these EQs. Like I'll, I might use this, I might use one of these, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I might switch these out for one of these other EQs, but I usually just start with this because I like the sound that I can get with it really quick while recording. Um, but if you don't have the Slate Digital Bundle, which I highly recommend, um, you can obviously use the EQ37 band. Obviously use the Pro Q3. Um, I use this SSL channel. I, I used to use the VQ4. When I first bought some plugins, I bought Wave, the Waves Gold Bundle. I used to use the VEQ4 all the time. But I don't really use it for this that much anymore. But you know, any EQ for real. But that's just what I like to use right there. I, I usually have that there. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I, at the end, I have, oh damn, I didn't mean to do that, but fab. At the end, I have an EQ just to roll off some low end and to roll off some top end too. But also to just tighten up, like I roll off a little bit of low end, maybe roll off some top end. But also I might need to tighten up a few little small things here or there, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But that's usually, usually I just roll off a little low end and a little top end. That's something, you know, try that. Try rolling off some top end and see what it does. I'm not going to tell y'all what I think it does for me. But just try it. Just a little bit. Just a touch. And see what you feel like, you know? Um... Then I like I like putting this limiter. Um, I got this little thing where it kind of you know takes all of these settings off. I don't really want it quantized or dithered, but I just bring this threshold down a little bit sometimes, and it like it does something for me. I don't know what it is. Sometimes I do it with the L2, but I've been doing it more with this, and I mess with the release and the analog and all of this stuff to see what sounds the best to me. Um, but yes, yeah, I just try it. You know what I'm saying? It kind of, it's definitely gain. It's turning it up, but it's more than that. It's something else too, but that's what we got. That's my chain for the lead vocals and for everything else. It's literally the same, literally the same. The only thing that's different is on the ad libs. I guess not literally the same because it's, uh, subtle differences <laughs> but the only thing that is different is I put a little reverb bring that up I put a little room we'll go with room one we'll turn that down about right there we'll just randomly go here and then we'll bring this down about to you know we'll go actually we'll go five blah I might mess with that probably not but blah out you feel me a little room reverb on the ad libs kind of sits it back just a tad just a smidge you feel me behind the vocal and then on the um backgrounds same thing put the reverb on there but change the room i'll leave that right there and then we'll run that right there and then we're gonna just put that on seven 
see that right there and then I'm also gonna put an H delay on here but if you don't have um, any other if you just have Pro Tools plug plugins you can use a mod delay so I'll just you know make an example with the with the mod delay I'm using this as like a slap kind of situation so I would um, if I was using this I would probably do something like that and turn the feedback up like that and then you just turn the mix down a little bit you know something like that you feel me and always control s I've been saving this whole time I've been just control s control s after every every move you feel me but it's kind of just a little space little delays you know very subtly on the background just making a little bit of space for the backgrounds you know what I'm saying making it feel vibey and cool but other than that literally everything else is the same bring the de-essers down bring the EQ the compressor approach so we gonna this is maybe gonna be the only edit so this goes fast this is not gonna be the only edit but you, you know if you know you know all right, the only thing I'm gonna change right here is I'm gonna put a Pro Q3 at the end of these so that I can really wrap around or wrap these ad libs and these background vocals around the, the, the lead or put them in places that I want to really quickly. You feel me while recording? But everything else is the same. All right, all right. so. We got our little vocal chain going going crazy. Now we got to, uh, I was going to do the effects, but we're going to do these buses real quick. Um, on my mix bus, so this pre-master is basically my mix bus. On my mix bus or my pre-master, whatever you want to call it, I put um, some saturation on here, a little um, goddamn, I use the virtual mix rack to kind of simulate going through like a, you know a console kind of situation I'm not really sure what you could use on a Pro Tools plugin to kind of emulate this but I wonder what it would sound like if you put like lo-fi on your whole mix you know what I'm saying if you put lo-fi on the mix and just like change the saturation or if you put like if you put air distortion on your on your mix and you know what I'm saying adjusted it a little bit or what other kind of interesting plugins? I need to tap back into this Rectify. I used to use that back in the day, but I ain't used it in a long time. Or a little bit of, I don't know if Sanzap comes with uh, Pro Tools or not, but they got this little drive thing that might be cool, but I feel like that shit would fuck your mix up, putting Sanzap on that shit. Um, but anyway, there might be something that could give you a little extra little something, you feel me? Um, but I use the Virtual Mix Rack from uh, Slate Digital and i got a preset of course called mix bus and all it is this virtual mix bus um does it tell you the the what you call it talk to me emulates the summing amp characteristics of each console so yeah there you go i try whatever console that sounds good to me and then i adjust the input adjust the drive bling blow put that back and then um, I put a Pro Q3 here when I'm mixing I use a different EQ but when I'm recording I just use this EQ because it's quick oh some noise we'll figure that out but yeah you know so I might have to boost or cut anywhere or whatever right so you know we got a little EQ on there and then I'm gonna put a compressor I use this SSL compressor I used to actually put this on my mix bus you can make that thing work though you can make it work you feel me you can definitely make it work but i don't do it anymore though um i don't really know what else you could put on your mix bus as far as a compressor if you don't have any other pro plugins there's so many there there's not even a lot of plugins but there's so many i don't even remember what other plugins pro tools had as far as compressors um i feel like there was more than one i don't know if b76 came with pro tools or not audio track I think there might be a compressor on here but anyway you know try it out see what you like I use the SSL compressor when I'm mixing most of the time I mean not when I'm mixing but when I'm uh, when I'm recording and then I put it on the you know the Dr. Dre 
ease it back. I actually have my preset set to that. I didn't click on it, but I just wanted to do it to show y'all, you know. Very, very slow attack, very, very fast release. Well, the slowest attack and the fastest release. Um, and then this threshold, this this will probably be engaged a little bit. It will be compressing a little bit um, because it's, it's calibrated to like, you know, the old meters, the VU meters, which is like around like 18 dB in Pro Tools. But yeah, so, and I'll try this analog, turn it on and off, see what sounds the best to me. Then that's all I have on my mix bus, but on here, another virtual um, virtual mix rack. But the channel this time, instead of the mix rack, you feel me? Let me show y'all this virtual channel right here, but I of course have a preset called channel. And I again, I mess with this and see what sounds the best, the input and the drive. And I also, move this over and put it on the lead vocals so everything has these little different like textures it's like you know the lead vocals is running through some kind of emulated console the beat is running through some kind of emulated console and the whole mix is running through some kind of some kind of emulated console and you know we got something on my background vocals i put i use um i use micro shift but you can use air chorus, air ensemble, flanger, phaser. You feel me? This chorus June 6 is free. It's pretty straight too. I like it actually. I I'm, I use it when I make beats a lot. Um, this Bahala. Wait, no, 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 that's not it. Bahala Supermassive is free, and they have some some cool like plugins that do what I'm thinking of kind of create space with delay and you know what I'm saying phasing and all that kind of stuff chorus and stuff they have some cool presets in there that that do that that's cool but um I just put a little micro shift on that thing and turn the percentage down kind of low about right there and then I mess with these and see what's best you know probably like one to three or maybe five sometimes but around there whatever feels right i do that really quick and then also on my lead vocals i put this sit up straight i put this air eq on there but obviously you can use the pro tools eq um so i'm gonna just put that there first i usually just have this on there already um and i'll boost a little bit the top end sometimes if i need to i just have it there if i need it i might do more like further eq with the eq you feel me right <laughs> i might do a little boost here that kind of gives you a little like i don't know i feel like it's kind of in you know five or six hundred maybe four or something like that i gotta listen to it again but it kind of gives you a little uh a little bump in the warmish kind of area but that's it some a lot of times i will put some saturation right before this eq but usually not when i'm recording i usually just have this up so right now i'm actually going to bypass all of these because i have them bypassed Ooh, also if you hit control and click on this it bypasses and unbypasses this if you hit windows and click on this it bypasses everything or unbypasses everything from what you clicked and below and it does the same thing for sins also so there you go so like bypass all of those or you know whatever right or just individual ones you feel me if i just hit control it's individual ones if i hit if i hold windows and click it's all of them that i click or in below um there you go and after that on my master I put I'm not really sure what kind of analyzation plugins they have in Pro Tools I don't even know if they really have any but I use with it ooh, with it with it with it with it the pads analyzer where are you my god where you at where you at where you at though here we go sound feel gotta be here yes 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 yes, yes. pads analyzer this is from waves i use this i put it on rms check my rms right here on this meter 
check that you know what i'm saying that's really all i use it for honestly i don't really i i check phase by ear i guess sometimes i do look at this frequency thing just for fun i suppose but uh i look at this uh where it's at loudness analyzer from melda which is free it's free but please upgrade if you can i can't so it's free they have like a free bundle that's actually pretty solid it's some dope stuff but i use this as my loudness analyzer at some point i'm gonna get a new one but i i use this at some point i'm actually gonna get all the mail to stuff because I, I they have some other stuff that i want to try out anyway i um i use this to, to just to peep the loudness you know what i'm saying for at the end when i'm just bringing up the level of the rough mix in the recording session to send off to the artist and uh lastly i have i believe this plugin i'm about to show y'all is also free i'll be forgetting where this stuff is at mv meter 2. i gotta check my obs every now and then because i think i'll be messing stuff up but um damn i'm almost at an hour <laughs> but i use this um to kind of just lower get my levels you know what i'm saying like if it's hit if everything is hitting around zero while recording then you know i'm at a i'm at a good level i'm okay if it's smacking this a little bit too but when i master when i when i bring the oh shit i forgot to tell you i put a limiter on here too i'm gonna just hit that if you hit this this plugin will stay up when you you hit this this plugin will stay up when you bring up a new plugin um i put this limiter on here i bring this down to um got down negative 0.2 shit i was trying not to do that okay negative 0.2 and i bring that there hit that there i need to make a preset for this Oh, I already have one ref limiter, but it should be like that. I like T2 better usually. Let me save that. All right. So anyway, I have this right there and then I just bring this down, bring my level up. And of course, when I bring the level up, it's going to be destroying this. So I have this bypassed. But um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I do it. I mess with the release. Of course, all of these. I listen and see what sounds the best. Um, Bling. You feel me? So I have that on my mix bus. I forgot to tell you all that. But I have all these bypass, honestly, because to me, when these are unbypassed, they do something to the sound. It sounds different. And I don't want that. So I have them bypassed until I just need them to look at, you know, the analyzation of the song. Um, so that's it. Now we're going to hit these effects. We, we kind of there. Next thing we're going to do after we get these effects is we're going to put a beat in and we're going to um mock record just for example purposes so i'm gonna bring all of these right here just so we can you know do what we do on them right here i like to put lo-fi on the beginning of all my effects because i like to um and it's like i, I have a preset for this also start so i got all these presets just to go quick i got simp set which is 1.1 with a slight tad of noise you feel me but there we go um yeah i like this because it kind of rolls off some high end but not like an eq it's different you know what i'm saying it does it in a different way i just like it you know what i'm saying and sometimes i bring it down even more but i start with it right there i mess with the bit right the anti-alias distortion saturation it's all these knobs here how can i not turn them you feel me so i mess with all of that but i'm gonna put this all on all of the effects i don't know if y'all hear that plane it's so loud in the motherfucker. so just for um clarity reasons i'm gonna put it down in the comments where all of these are oh snap doubler this is gonna be a quarter note delay this is gonna be a slap this is gonna be a i don't know what kind of reverb this is going to be we're just going to figure it out on those this is going to be a quarter note delay too just because and but this is specifically for the back 
background like for the ad libs and the background vocals so now we gotta make these we gotta bust these appropriately so these are all the delays for how i do my sins because i don't like having a whole lot of sins <clears throat> at least not on my lead vocals i just I don't know. I feel like I'm just wasting sins. You feel me? Like, <laughs> so I just have lead vocal delay, and I have lead vocal reverb. And then on my background vocals, uh, I'm on background effects. I have B delay, and some when I'm mixing, sometimes I'll make more delays and more reverbs for the um, ad libs and the backgrounds and stuff like that. But when I'm recording straight to the point you know what i'm saying don't need all that for what i be doing like i don't really need all that so now i'm gonna put these sins i'm gonna set these sins up so i'm gonna set this up so it looks like kind of how it usually looks and it's not too too confusing so on my lead vocal aux i'm gonna put this lead vocal delay which is right here i'm gonna put it on pre-master and if I hit Alt, or if I hold Alt, okay, hold Alt and click, it brings us up to the top. If I do that on like pretty much everything, you know, it resets it to like zero. It zeroes everything out. It does that for most like stuff and plugins too. So if I bring that, hold Alt, hit that, brings it, you know, zeroes it out. So yeah, um, I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna bring up the lead vocal reverb. I'm going to do the same things. I'm gonna zero out the um, fader. I'm gonna hit pre-master. And that's what we got from my sins. That's the all the sins that I got from my lead. Just those two. And I got all my delays right here, my doubler. And I'm gonna adjust the volume here on my doubler. I'm gonna adjust the volume for the delay right here. Slap right here. Reverb, blow, bling. Boom. And now these are all set up. And then for my delay, I'm going to put B delay here. Pre fader. Drag that over here. My computer be big lagging. You feel me? So bear with a brother. But there we go. I'm going to go over the B reverb right there. And we're going to... Whenever... Whenever you ready. No hurry though. Give it a pre-fader. And then we slide that over there too. Like so. There we go. Game time. So now we got all our sins set up. So how I like to do my leads. Is I like to adjust the... The effect. The volume of the effect. On these faders. You know, if I want more reverb, I'll turn this up. Less, I'll turn it down. On my lead vocals, I don't do it on the send because I use like compression and like other stuff on these effects that work with the lead vocal dynamically. Like sometimes I'll use sidechain compression on the reverb. And if, I, if I'm on the lead vocal reverb and I turn this up, then I'm compressing that more. And that may or may not be desired. I may not want that. You know, so I, I leave these set how they are and I adjust the reverbs and the delays and all that stuff here because on my doubler, I, in fact, do use compression 99.9% of the time. I just go with the R compressor, but of course you can use the Pro Tools compressor too. And, you know, I got my clean preset and I blow, bling it, bland that, you know, kind of just taking those top transients off the, uh, off the doubler and making sure it's like this instead of like like that you know what i'm saying then i'll compress it and uh in this case i'm going to use the i'm gonna use the double two from waves but in the past i used the chorus i used the ensemble the flanger you can use the phaser you can use the june chorus you know what i'm saying which is the june chorus is free if i didn't say that already you know what i'm saying you can do what you do you can turn up you can have a good time you have a ball you have a blast Thought I had a preset on here, but I don't. So you know, we just do that. I'm a. I like to bring the delays out a little longer, cause that's just what I like. And then we're gonna hit 
you know that's probably a little too much but we're going we just doing random stuff right now you feel me we just just doing whatever's clever you feel me we're gonna turn both of those off and we're gonna save that of course we always saving and then that's my doubler you feel me you could put extra stuff on there if you want to you know what i'm saying but that's what we got for now and then of course i'm bringing the pro q3 which are on all my effects because i eq all my effects um but usually on the doubler i just you know a little low shelf probably dip out a little bit somewhere maybe i don't know somewhere here then a little roll off right here then a little roll off something like so you feel me bling blah i'm gonna copy these uh pro q3s over on all of these effects all right so we got all the eqs on there because i i eq all of those so now we got the delay i use h delay for my quarter note most of the time but obviously you can use my delay Fuck it, we just gonna use my delay. I'ma savagely flip the phase on the right side and I'm gonna link these and we're gonna go whole note, half note, quarter note. I think that's a quarter note. Then we're gonna bust that groove right there. Then we're gonna slither that right like so. Game time, there's our quarter note delay. And we're gonna EQ that however we see fit. You can mess with, obviously on all these low fives, you can mess with the saturation, distortion, all of that, give it a little, a little extra something. You can put a little reverb on that thing, you know what I'm saying? You can turn up, you can go crazy, do what you like. But this is just a basic something, you get a basic little sound. Um, then we're gonna put a slap. I usually use, I'm gonna do a mono slap too. I usually use um, this EC300. Or I, I still use this tape echo. I think this might be free from Pro Tools. I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to hit this mod delay. You feel me? We're going to keep that thing one thou wow today. Um, so what I usually do is I have it at zero. And I turn it up until it sounds like a slap to me. And I adjust this. And I might tighten just a little bit on the feedback. There you go. Tighten up. And then on the reverb, so on the reverbs, I usually have true verb on here. Um, true verb, here we go. I usually use true verb from waves. That's what we're gonna use. Um, but obviously you can use the D verb or you know, whatever. I got a little preset off of millennium verb. I just adjusted decay time usually and that kind of gives me a decent sound but this is off the millennium verb preset fudge so that's the millennium verb preset and then that's just what i did just slight little adjustment you know what i'm saying um but yeah i usually start with that but of course you can use whatever you like i use d verb sometimes h verb sometimes illustrious plates sometimes verb suite classics most of the time but i holla super massive sometimes i'm actually r verb sometimes i don't know if i said h reverb but yeah i use that sometimes but um, i'm actually about to get the valhalla stuff like yesterday um but yeah for the second reverb i use r verb most of the time so that's what i'm gonna use but d verb also you know what i'm saying like d verb a lot i literally just put it on this hall or sometimes i use what else? I don't remember. But I use something else on it sometimes. I just fudge with that. I'm fudge with that. I actually don't really like the pre-delay on here that much. So I'll use a uh, H delay to make my pre-delay or something. If I need a pre-delay for this reverb, for the way I'm using it. Um, and then of course, I EQ all of these how I see fit. A lot of times for my reverb, I just do a little high pass, a little high shelf, tighten that up however I need to. And maybe a little bit of a low pass also. Then I'll, I might, you know, dip around somewhere around here if need be. And that's how we do that. Damn. And then for the ad libs, for the delay, I usually use H delay. I use my delay there. So, you know, just to demonstrate, I'm going to put this H delay on here. <clears throat> and then I'll dial in that quarter note. And then I'll flip that finesse. And I'll switch up the depth. I'll mess with that low fi see if I like that better or not. Take that analog off. And there we go. I also, when I use the H-Delay, because I flipped the phase on the H-Delay, 
when I put it in mono, the delay is gonna go away. So, and I personally don't like that, but I like how it's, oh my God, I think I just spit. But I like how it sounds when the phase is flipped on the delays. So to stop it from going away in mono, I put a mod delay on there, bring that down. And I put this at about three and I put this at about 13 and then I bling blam bloom blit out and there you go you can hear that in mono now um that's it and then I might put a little reverb I might put some modulation or something like that on there but for now for recording that's where we at with it you know that's why I leave these spaces open though I leave these spaces open if I want to compress if I want to add any like saturation here if I want to compress down here or add saturation or add another delay or another reverb or some kind of time volume phase whatever manipulation thing right here i can do it um so for the last reverb on my ad libs and background vocals most of the time i literally use deverb i legit put this on hall or this room and i turn it down a little bit and turn that up and that's it and obviously on all these effects I, it starts right here, but I'll mess with this as soon as I can. And I'll EQ, you know, this is a reverb. So I kind of, my reverb curves tend to kind of look like this. Maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes a little bit of a shelf, kind of like that. A little of that, and a little bit of that, you know what I'm saying? You know, tend to kind of look that way sometimes, but sometimes they don't. It's all off the ear. So that's how it's set up you know what I'm saying and then I'll move this right here so you know it kind of looks kind of organized and stuff like that but that's you know that's how we that's how we got it that's how we got it I hope this is really making sense you know what I'm saying if it's not ask questions in the comments let me know so now I'm about to get a beat off of YouTube because this shit is over an hour we finna demonstrate mock recording real quick so let me switch the camera around now we're gonna hit that internet that uh, firefox we slide into youtube as you can see the date is it's fucking the 11th 6 11 culture 3 just dropped today from the migos so you know migos type beat culture Culture three. You feel me? See what they see what's popping. See what they bragging. Oh shit! Twenty nine minutes ago. Uh, looping. Oh, let me let me switch the screen back. Okay. Shit, better be hard too. Man. It's great. Um, so what I do is I copy the URL. I use this program software or whatever called Media Human. I think it's on every, I think you can get it on Mac. I don't really know. But um, obviously, I don't know if I said this or not, but you know, hopefully everybody knows the Mac equivalents. You know what I'm saying? Like I know it if I got the keyboard in front of me because everybody uses a Mac, but I don't, I, I just know it by feel, not by off the dome, you know? Um, but I, I use media human to download. This is kind of way less sketchy than using just the, the plain old internet. You feel me and shit. Yeah. But I use media human and I download it. Like I'm just doing it right now. And then I have this, I think this might actually, I think key finder might actually only be for PC, but I use this to find the key, but they have other, uh, other like programs that do it. And the new auto tune does it also. The new auto tune finds the key, so I run batch analysis, click that, click that, and then it tells me the key. And then I have Decadence, which is like a kind of like a DJ software, and I use that to tell me the tempo. It usually gets pretty spot on. Oh damn, crashed. It usually gets like pretty spot on though. You know, I don't, I very rarely have any problems with it. So we got 132 for the tempo, and we got what was it d minor g minor so we got 
132 for the tempo. I just type tempo. I just typed in right here and I hit the numbers. Hit enter. I just want to make sure I ain't miss them. Okay, and then I go to here on my auto tune. I hit G minor. If you want, you could change it up here. If you right click right here, also, you know, you got the different options, the different things that that come up. But these are the only things that I really feel I need. So that's what I have up. But if you want, you know, you can hit that plus sign. You can go minor keys. You go G minor. And blam. But a lot of times I don't do that. I just go G minor right there. And I uh, put it in auto tune. That's how I do that. Also, if you right click up here or really kind of almost anywhere in the, in the blank spot on here, you can put the different controls. These are the ones that I like having up. Um, also, one thing to note, if you are a relatively new Pro Tools user. Oh, first of all, let me bring the beat in. Let me let me calm down, slow down, slow down, relax. All right. To do that, I hit Control Shift I. And that's how you bring up the import audio window. Don't worry about that. Not important. But then if, if say this is not on your folder, when you bring that up, it, it goes somewhere weird. You go wherever your you know stuff is, wherever you have your stuff saved at. And you know, record session template. And then you hit the audio files. And then you save it in there. So you can, I, I don't know, I just copy. I copy it and paste it in there. Like I control C, control V and paste it in there and then hit enter on Mac use current folder right there on Mac it's um, slightly different but pretty much the same then I hit clip list um, let me see if I can like change my view I forgot how I did that um, so y'all can see is it insert Liddy I know it kind of look a little funky but anyway uh, the beat will come up right here in clips. I just want to do this so y'all can see it and then I drag it in I literally just click and hold and drag it in. I wonder if I click it again. What happened? Okay, that's cool Never do that, but you drag it in. You're right. All right, we're going back uh, Make sure that switch back. Wow. Okay And then I'm gonna take that away And so now we in here. So what I was about to tell y'all We got the tempo 132, right? So if you hit this damn, let me switch it back what was that button insert make sure that switched game time okay so if you hit this button right here you can use like faster shortcuts i forgot what this is actually actually called what this button is named but when it's lit up yellow it's engaged when it's not uh, it's not engaged right but um so say i want to zoom in to this whole thing if i hit e you know blows it up if i hit e again it goes away if i hit b it cuts the clip you know what i'm saying if I hit Z, it undoes. I don't have to hit Control Z. You know what I'm saying? I could copy stuff. I could copy with C and just paste with V. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. It, it makes it really, really quick. It's, it's cool things that you can do with that. And I'll talk about it more later as I do the mock, mock recording. But anyway, I hit E. And now I see this is how it's off because there's space in the beginning of this MP3, right? So that's why this is off of the grid so what i do is i look for the first transient usually it's a kick or 808 or something like that like the first big one that signifies like oh this is where the beat drops and right here this is where it's at so i click close to it blow it up and now if this is in minutes and seconds when it's in grid mode you just move that right here when it's in grid mode the line is right here but if i switch it to slip mode what the fuck is going on you feel me like i don't what like you know what i'm saying like where where's the beginning at now so let me switch back let me put this cursor right here and i'll hit, and it's still off you know what i'm saying because it's on minutes and seconds but if you switch this to bars and beats it stays with the grid you feel me so let me move this cursor over here and i hit grid mode you see these modes changing up here it's spot shuffle you know what i'm saying all that um, but grid mode is right here then hit slip it stays right there so you still know where the grid is so I hit slip so I can move around freely like that if I'm in grid mode it locks to the grid like you know what I'm saying I go over here it, it locks to the grid however I move you know so slip mode and that's F1 F2 F3 F4 slip is F2 grid is F4 
right so now I put I hit it slip mode I hit it slip mode I have slip mode engaged and then I just go here I delete that and I literally hit E again to make that smaller hit four and then I literally just let that snap to the grid right there and I drag that back to the front and now I'm on time but the beat is loud AF if I play it from here <laughs> You see that's going crazy, that's too loud. Can't no artist record over that, so we gotta turn the beat down. So in order to do that, I hit shift, I hold shift, windows, and I just scroll down on the scroll wheel. Just scroll on down, we'll go about 10, negative 10 dB, you see the volume changing right there. Scrolling up, scrolling down, you feel me? Light work just like that. And then, you know what I'm saying, I can do that, or I can hold shift, alt, and I can change the size of these with just shift, alt. But I'm weird and I like for that to be kind of perfect so there we go um game time there we it you know what I'm saying so now the beat is lower now it's hitting at 10 negative 10 db you feel me it's not clipping no more because it wasn't technically really clipping but yeah it's not up there no more right and now the artist can record over that I might even bring it down lower you know what I'm saying like when I was showing y'all earlier when I use this to check my level that's a little up there you know what i'm saying i'm gonna bring it down just a tad i'm gonna just loop this real That's good enough for me. I meant to uh, um, bypass that. But I don't know if y'all saw me right there messing with the clip gain line. To bring the clip gain line up, you hold shift, windows, and minus. Damn, I know the fucking screen is changing. Okay. All right. We're good. And so if you hold down, if you make a, if you hold down control and click on this line, you can make points. If you hold down um, alt, you can click on them and delete them. But that's a lesson for another day. Um, yeah, so there we go. So now we're going to record. We got the beat in. I'm like, yo, we good. We vibing. They didn't smoke. They didn't drink. They in the zone. We finna record some shit. So they in the booth. I'm like, you ready? Like, yeah, we ready. Let's get it. So I hit control space or I can hit three on the numeric pad or I can hit F12 to record. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but if you right click on here, put this in quick punch mode. The best way to record in Pro Tools. I don't know why you would record any other way except for maybe loop record. But let's go. Start from the top. All right, he recorded a fire intro right there. He's like, "That was that was it. Let's let's punch in from the intro. I'm going into the for the hook. All right, bet." Right, he just recorded a few lines right there, a couple lines. He's like, all right, let me let me punch in from right there. All right, bet. Bet just recorded another few, another couple lines, vibing. Back to back, one one taking it, many taking it, but one taking on each take, keeping it going. All 
All right, just went in. Now he wants to hear all of it. As you see, I hit a location right here. If you hit enter, you will say, right, this is the end of the hook, I believe. So <clears throat> if you hit enter at any point, like if I just hit it now, you know, I can make a location. If I hold alt and click it, I delete it. But I use this to quickly know where I'm at in the session. Like this to me sounds like the hook. So say I'm recording. He's like, all right, let's go into the verse. About to record real quick. I just use that very quickly to signify, okay, the hook ended right there. And now this is the verse. So now when I want to fly stuff and I'm going to move that down because this is the verse, you feel me? And this is the hook. So now, and as you can see, I'm, I'm topping and tailing as I'm going. So it's in grid mode. If I hold down control and move the mouse around, now it's in slip mode. So I can go to the end of this and I can just hit F and fade that out real quick. And I can, or I can go to the end and I can hit X and just delete that. If it's in this mode, if you hit X, you just delete that, you know, that end, you know, but I maybe there's a little bit of a vocal right there. So I just want to fade, you know, that, that right there. Maybe I want to go right here and fade that, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's, that's just the intro, right? And um, so there we go. We got the lead vocal recorder right there. We're going to clean that up a little bit. It's like, all right, bet, you know, I'm feeling how I started off the verse. Let's keep going. So we keep going, we keep recording, blah, blah, blah. And now we get somewhere. Where's the hook though? That might be the hook right here, right? So let's go right there. Let's hit enter twice so that location just solidified and let's just, you know, fly this hook over here. Now I can use these locations to fly the hook. If I hit control D, bow, there go that hook right there. And then I might be like, oh, well maybe that's the end of the hook right there. And maybe since that was over here, maybe this is where the next hook is. And maybe I can just fly that hook over there so it's already there. You know what I'm saying? All the leads for the hook are all good. And maybe I might need to drag out this a little bit and add that fade back. But I can do that really quickly while he's he or she is recording. You know what I'm saying? And then we record the we record the verse. And now he's like, that shit fire. Let's go to the ad libs. All right, bet. I just drag that down. And he's like, all right, let me uh, just start me at the hook. I'm like, bet. He does he does the ad libs he does ad libs for the whole entire hook let's say and we good so now I'm gonna fly these ad libs over too you feel me blah blah I could hit that twice because this is already lined up and we we good you know what I'm saying I can hit that because that's the outro and you know now we got ad libs for the hook all in the right place you know what I'm saying and then you know we hit the second verse whatever you feel me that's how you do it and then you say you want to do some background vocals you want to stack some things all right you want to do some in and outs whatever's clever let's do it let's get it wow in and outs you know what i'm saying and then you just drag these down and you keep going more 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 bet more okay so on and so forth and then if it's multiple stacks on top of each other whatever you can work your panning situation right here you feel me you can work your volume situation right here you feel me just click on them and just go go ham you know what i'm saying if you hit alt you can put them back in the center but you can get quick nice balances like that and then you can you know quickly process if you i like i like flipping back and forth to the mix window that's just my preference i like using this but if you you know what i'm saying if you want to enlarge these you can hold windows and hit up or down on the like the, the arrows and they'll make these larger and you can kind of mix from just this edit window which is actually probably better for recording you could do this a lot faster you know what i'm saying you can see everything make these a little bigger and you feel me do what you do you feel me go ham but that's pretty much it I'm, i want to think about i'm gonna take a moment to think about if there's anything that i missed one thing i did want to tell y'all um when you're recording, I don't know if y'all are going to hear me when I pull up this window, but 
Hopefully y'all y'all will. If you go to playback engine, when you're recording, you want to be on the lowest buffer size you can be on. For me, that's 256. That's the one that works for me. Um, so when the artist is recording, there's very little latency. You know what I'm saying? If you, for me, if I go a 512 above, it's super audible latency. They sound late when they talk. You know, there's like a delay on their on their voice. Excuse me, not like a delay, like an echo, but like the voice comes late. Um, but when you mix, you want to be at the highest buffer size. So 1024 when you mix, that's the highest buffer size that I have. Um, uh, some people got can do 128, 64, or 32, or whatever. But you know, work figure out what works for your DAW and your computer and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that let me okay that. And then the last thing I know I want to tell y'all is if you go to the I.O. And you go to your buses, say you, you made buses, but they're all out of whack and all out of order. And you want to organize them. You can just go here and you can move these around. You know what I'm saying? You can you can order them however you you need to, you know, like I actually want to change this right here because I don't I don't route that like that anymore I didn't have a snare right there a kick and bass right there so you feel me you can you can do what you do you know what I'm saying you can route this you can rename stuff you can you can get it if you have outputs but your your outputs so let me okay that if you go here say um for example the Q mix okay computer froze Okay, we, we got movement. I'm trying to finish this up because I'm way the fuck over an hour. Say you got your cue mix up. You got it made. You made the aux. You got the input. But the output, the outputs aren't up. Your only output showing is your master. You can go to your I.O. And just hit default. Hit default and all the outputs that you have will come up maybe some extra outputs i don't think i have that many outputs um the same thing for inputs you feel me you can hit that and they'll all come up maybe i do i don't know but um they all come up right and hit okay and now you go here and my computer catches up all your outputs are here And then you select whatever output. And there you go. So that's how you do it. You feel me? If there are any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me switch this camera around. Let me make sure that's switched. Game time. If there are any questions, any suggestions, or any type of videos you want me to make, let me know. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm kind of new to this like YouTube teaching thing. And I know this shit just went way over an hour. So I'm uh peace out. You feel me? Like and subscribe. If you like the vibe. There we go. I forgot it already. All right. <laughs>